And here we go. Can you see my screen? Yes. Perfect. Um, because we are, I think we are running quite late, I'm not going to repeat a lot of things that have been said. So I'm going, going to try to go straight to the point. Um, I am, um, uh, so I'm going to talk about who am I, who I am, monkeypox in France in 2022, but I'm going to go fairly quickly. What we did, uh, which is looks like what other organizations have done, so nothing really new there apart from two points, what we learned and monkeypox in 2023. So I'm Stéphane Vance. I am French. I'm a gay man. I've been HIV positive for 23 years. I'm coordinator for all the European projects for EDS and Coalition Plus. Uh, I've been engaged in the, uh, the HIV uh, battle for 10 years, so I call myself a young activist, I wish. Um, regarding the, uh, the monkeypox in France in 2022, um, first cases came from um, the uh, people coming back from um, Mas Palomas in Spain, uh, the Pride, and from the Big Fetish Week in Anvers in Belgium. Uh, both events had clusters of MPOX, so had straight away warned the Ministry of Health, telling them we need to act and act quickly. 30th of May, uh, as they do, the Minister of Health said everything is all right, seven cases, we have enough doses of vaccines, it's under control, no worries at all. Obviously, it was not. Uh, 8th of July, um, we had the complete validation from the Ministry of Health of pre exposure and post exposure vaccination. And we pushed for calculation of the number of people that needed to get vaccinated. 21st of July, our advocacy started to work and vaccine, a massive vaccination center was uh, open in, right in the heart of Paris. However, we had an issue that they didn't want to open vaccination centers in Marseille, Nice and Montpellier, in the south of France where MSM, especially French MSM, were due to go on holiday. Uh, one thing which is uh, specific with France, but not France only, monkeypox is categorized as a war biological weapon. And therefore, the number of doses we had is a secret, army secret. Therefore, um, it's actually controlled by the Minister of Defense uh, uh, rather than the uh, Minister of Health. So what we did, uh, a lot of things. Um, we work with the, the communities. We work with the, the uh, organization supporting sex workers. Uh, we work in SONAS, we supported vaccination and so on, like many organizations did. Um, we also did vaccination in Lille, which is in the north of France, where Belgium MSM uh, uh, came along to get vaccinated. 25% um, of uh, vaccination in Lille were for MSM from Belgium. And we also vaccinated in our um, sexual health centers uh, called The Spot in Montpellier and Marseille. We did basic harm reduction and communication. One thing which was really important um, for us is that we supported a peer-to-peer -peer telegram group, which was like with confidentiality uh, of information. And this telegram group was very interesting because we had 800 MSM on this group, many of them on PrEP, HIV positive or engaging in chemsex and could take the information and then while having sex or while discussing with their sex partners at the weekend, they could pass, they could pass on the information that was um, uh, very important. And also we did uh, regular messages on our two groups, the PrEP DL1, a French uh, uh, PrEP group with 15,000 members and the Info Chemsex by Ed's group, which is like guys engaging in chemsex with 3,000 uh, members. Knowledge is a weapon, ACT UP uh, um, taught us that. And for monkeypox, same thing, the more information you get, the better is your uh, prevention. Uh, what was specific of France? Uh, I'm gonna quickly uh, go through this, this um, uh, uh, the thing we learned. First of all, uh, the French Ministry of Health decided to lengthen the interval between the first and second dose, and second dose, sorry, for non um, immuno compromised people. Uh, the aim was to prioritize at least the first dose for as many people as possible. We, as a community-based NGO, questioned this decision. Uh, we thought it was the, the right decision. Also, uh, Ed pushed for the pharmacist, uh, that the, the pharmacist could vaccinate like they did for COVID and it worked very well in France. Five pharmacies tested the, vaccination, the monkeypox vaccination. Then more pharmacies were allowed to do so. We thought that was, um, um, it should have been done much earlier as the, the, it worked very well. French pharmacies vaccinating worked actually uh, very well. Uh, 
Um, for a few weeks, uh, the Ministry of Health didn't want to talk monkeypox. We thought, we know that they didn't want, didn't want to talk about monkeypox because they thought that if they talk about monkeypox, they're going to have to talk about MSM, and then gonna, they think that a, a wave of homophobia will begin. But we tell them, we told them we need to talk about uh, gay men and monkeypox because it is the population which is the most affected. One thing which is very important for us, we need, and even now, this is a le learning curve, but it is something that we need to do now as well. We need to encourage ourselves, but also doctors, nurses, and so on, to talk about monkeypox when they talk about STIs, HIV, and PrEP, and the other way around. When they talk about monkeypox, they talk about uh, STIs and HIV. And when they talk about for a PrEP consultation, they also need to talk monkeypox while talking about PrEP. And on European level, uh, we push for a more coordinated response in order to uh, accelerate vaccination process and support countries where the vaccine was not available. It's, as, a, as a European uh, community-based organization, it's so important for us. Last two slides. This one we talked, uh, Juliana talked about it, and um, we had a, a little cluster in the uh, uh, Centre Val de Loire region, uh, 19 cases. One thing which, which was quite interesting about this cluster that we had a no death or no serious cases, and that once the cluster was um, uh, identified and, and dealt with, then no other cases happened uh, in, this, uh, in this specific region of France. Um, we are now following um, the WHO uh, Europe recommendations. Um, we'll mention that early on, but uh, I think WHO did an absolutely brilliant job uh, early in January to, to involve community-based organization. I think it's, it's a learning curve as well that when you involve um, uh, community-based organization and uh, prevention is, is better. So uh, thank you uh, to WHO Europe for that. Uh, on this slide, because the presentation is going to be saved on the uh, um, Adjection Europe website, I'm just going to focus on the bold uh, strategy to eliminate monkeypox. Because I think, if, if as, as far as I'm concerned, if you want to go, uh, to go away with five points today, these are the five points for me are very important. One, um, communication and community, mobi community mobilization is key. Uh, when talking about monkeypox, we talk about what we learned from the HIV crisis. It's nothing about us without us. This is 1983, the Denver principles, and it's still, it's still um, um, important today. And the Ministry of Health uh, in France has understood that, and they know they can't do without us. If they want to, to, to eliminate monkeypox. Uh, vaccination also, um, specifically for the second dose. Uh, many gay and bisexual men didn't get the second dose back uh, in the summer 2022. And uh, um, therefore, the, the current individual and collective antibodies protection is quite low. So, and, and with vaccination, we know that monkeypox is less complicated. Therefore, we need to keep pushing for more vaccination. Once again, raising awareness among health professionals. When you talk about STIs, HIV and PrEP, you talk about monkeypox. And when you talk about monkeypox, you also talk about PrEP, uh, uh, STIs, and so on. We need to support more and more uh, our gay brothers and, uh, and our um, fellow um, uh, sex workers and trans people who are isolated. It's very complicated after COVID, after monkeypox. So we need to support them when they get uh, isolated. And um, obviously, strengthening the uh, European um, uh, coordination. Um, I'd like to thank uh, uh, Action Europe and especially Ferenc, because last year, uh, when we wanted to push for more prevention, when we wanted to push and we need to be heard, Action Europe was at a key role for us to be heard by, by um, uh, local authorities and by, by, by the EU. So it was very important. Thank you for that. And we need to strengthen that uh, as we go along. And that's about it. Uh, I try to be as short as possible. Thank you very thank much. You.